We're going to bring him in right now to talk about the report that he put out earlier. Hello, Frank. First of all, thanks for joining us. Um, want to say thank you. Um, and I, I, I want to get this off my chest as well. You and I have had some disagreements. I, I think you thought maybe I was being disrespectful to your reporting. And, and looking back at it, I think maybe you were fair in, in thinking so. So I want to apologize for that to you directly. Um, you obviously have been diving deep into this story. And I know you have a lot of sources, not only maybe, uh, you know, on, on the Salt Lake and team levels, but also at the league level. So let's uh, let's I want to hand this over to Petey for just a moment. And then we'll get into your report. Okay? Yeah. And, and I want to say something. And, and I'm not a big social media guy. And, and clearly people that follow me or follow the show know a lot of things I say in sarcastic or in jest and sometimes taken out of context and people don't know who I am. They may misread those comments. And and, and I want to say a few days ago, I want to clear the air. Um, I, I sent some tweets to Frank um, a few days ago and you go back and look at them for contents. I just want to say that Frank, as a reporter, he's been covering the NHL for 15 years and has credible sources inside every single aspect of the game, including the league. He has broken stories across North America for years. And guess what? I haven't. I, I've been in the room. I have friends that work in the NHL. I've been in the NHL for 25 years, but I am not a reporter. I want to make that clear that at no point in our tweet exchanges did Frank or I call each other names. We didn't use profanity or make personal attacks. The issue was with sources giving us different comments and opinions. It was not Frank versus Petey. And lastly, if the Coyotes do move to Salt Lake City prior to the start of the 24-25 season, I promise I will be the first to give Frank his flowers on his reporting. I have seen this team on the verge of moving before, and I will hold out hope with until Commissioner Bettman makes an announcement. But in the meantime, please do not call Frank or I names. No personal attacks. You can debate. Give differing opinions. Share your hopes on the team that you follow, but don't make personal attacks. And if either of us is wrong in the reporting, acknowledge it, but don't disparage it. Use your right to unfollow. Thanks for listening. And Frank, welcome to the show. And I want to say this, thank, Frank, thank goodness it's not a written story because as we all know, not a good speller. <laughs> not, not a good speller. You couldn't spell Houston. <laughs> Sorry. I will do better. It's not the only word, Frank. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, no, hey, um, I really appreciate you guys having me. And first off, yeah, I'd like to say a few things as well. Um, look, this, I can't, I, I wish I was here under better circumstances, first yeah. off. Uh, second, I would say that um, I have such a huge amount of respect for Coyotes fans. Um, I think it's bullshit that when you go arena to arena, you hear players, coaches, whatever it might be, best fans in the NHL. The Coyotes quite literally have that claim, I think, because through all the thick and thin – um, I'm not pandering here. Like there really hasn't been a whole ton to root for and be invested in. And yet I'm looking at the numbers continue to grow on this show. And I'm looking at the people that fill Mullet Arena on a night to night basis. And, you know, previously at jobbing.com in Glendale and everywhere else, I've been to the games. I know that there are real hockey fans in Phoenix and I'll take it a step further. Um, I'm actually, if you really want my personal opinion, I'm a big believer in Phoenix being a true hockey market where it can work. I think for a million reasons, which you guys have chronicled over the years, it just hasn't, mostly starting with ownership and then the next part being the arena. And we can talk about that forever. But throughout my reporting process, as we've gone you know, through the gamut here the last number of months, I just want anyone to know that whenever I talk about the Coyotes or report about the Coyotes and what might happen, none of that's coming from a place where I'd like to sit here and gloat and say, hey, I'm glad this team is gone. It's nothing like that at all. It's just pure, hey, here's what's happening behind the scenes. Some of it, uh, there's a lot of nuance to it. Some of it is we all talk to different people. Um, there's no part of me that's sitting here saying, Hey, you know, give me credit. I'm right. Whatever that may be. That's all. I don't need that. Um, honestly, just trying to do my job in terms of reporting to the best that I can. And I do that with a healthy dose of respect for you guys and your show, um, the coyotes fans. And also as a fan of the marketplace, like I, I wish this were different. Yeah. Thanks for saying that, Frank. Let's let's get into it, okay? In your report today, you said the decision has not been made yet on whether to relocate to Salt Lake City or keep the team here for one more year. But based on your reporting and what your sources are telling you, 
what are you thinking the likelihood of relocation is at this point? Oh, um, it's pretty high. I would say it's probably a 90 to 95% shot. I think, um, you have to always allow for the possibility that things go haywire, but I do think that there is the framework of an agreement that I'd say most of it has been agreed to, um, the NHL's board of governors, and it's actually a really exclusive list of governors, not like they blasted this out to everyone. The league provided an update to them essentially saying, you know, amid this media speculation, kind of what's happening. And I think they know enough to know now. And I think there's Coyotes players that have been informed of some part of this too, that, look, we're dealing with semantics in terms of what the actual wording of it is. Is there a verbal agreement or, you know, whatever that might be, they're pretty far down the track on the agreement of a sale and ultimately to relocate this team. Help me understand why the NHL would late, wait so late in the game to make this decision after telling Alex Morello to pursue the state trust land purchase via auction that is now set for June 27th. We're, we're about two months away now. So why now instead of waiting to see what the outcome of that auction might be? I think it's a fair question. It's one that honestly I don't have the answer to. I can tell you that behind the scenes, I think – this has been an ongoing conversation. And I think for the longest time, um, part of the answer to that is, as best I could tell you, is Alex Maruello has been pretty headstrong in resisting any talk of something like that, that he's been so steadfast in his belief that he can not only win a land auction, but actually get a building built and 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 the all the development that goes along with that, that he he hasn't entertained the thought and idea of that. And so to be fair, that's actually another reason why I'm really careful in the language that I've used in my reporting today is because the league is also concerned that this might not get to the finish line, that this might not actually get signatures on it. What they're trying to avoid is um, a long and protracted battle, which if Alex Murrowello as owner of this franchise decides to dig his heels in on and not sell, um, no one's happy. So they don't want to go down that path. The league is still a believer in the market. The league uh, still has some, I guess, semblance of um, faith in, in Alex Maruello that he can pull this off because we'll talk about it. There's another aspect to this deal that's expected to be included in some language about bringing an expansion franchise back in, in the future. But there's a whole lot to unpack here in terms of how we got to this point. Yeah. yeah and one of the things I wanted to ask too is, is because, and it kind of tails up on what Craig said is, is, is why now? Because what we've been been hearing and we've heard it from Morello himself is that, well, we're going to get to the auction and, and then we'll see where we go from there. Is it be a big push by the board of governors? Is it the PA? I guess why now instead of waiting to the auction, do you know, get a sense of where that push is coming from? Well, I think again, the answer is the skepticism that exists of whether or not Alex Maruello can actually pull this off. Um, I think there's skepticism in league headquarters. I think there's skepticism with people who have boots on the ground in Arizona. Um, it's, it's one thing to want to do all these things. It's one thing to intend to do all these things and no one's questioning his intentions. It's, there's a long way between intentions and execution. And that's part of it. It's that even in a perfect world, you know, he delivers on every single aspect of what he says, and it happens all on the timeline that they've outlined. We're still talking about an October 2027 puck drop in what you call what would you call it? North Scottsdale? I mean, that's that's a long ways off. And so I think there's that part of it. It's like, okay, what happens if we get to a year from now, the land auction is won and we don't have steel and shovels in the ground. And there's nine roadblocks that are in place between infrastructure, lawsuits, environmental stuff, whatever. I don't know all the details. Craig knows all that stuff way better than I ever could. But what happens if we got to a year from now and there's been no progress 
Should we have just pulled the plug earlier? And so I think that's part of the questions that the league was beginning to ask. And then they ultimately got to a place, I believe, and no one has confirmed this, but I believe they ultimately got to a place of how can we make Alex Maruello happy so that we can all kind of, at least for the temporary short term, go our separate ways. Okay. I want to bring Mullet Arena into this discussion as well, Frank, because if, if you remember the original agreement, it was three plus one. They were going to play three years there with an option for a fourth. Pretty much everyone said at the time, yeah, they're going to be there four years. If, and it's a big if, they stay on the timeline that they projected, that adds only one more year to Mullet Arena. Do you believe maybe the, just the entire opinion, maybe Marty Walsh's comments and, and the ramped up rhetoric had any impact on them maybe changing their mind about the timeline of staying at mullet. I don't think so as much as Marty Walsh was sort of stamping his feet and, and obviously put the coyotes on blast. Um, the truth is outside of maybe, you know, trying to make it something in the next CBA bargaining in 2026, they can say all they want, but they don't, the NHL players association, unfortunately for them, doesn't have any control in this process. It's sort of like the same complaints that we've heard about the mayor in Scottsdale. You know, it's great that you're barking, but unfortunately this isn't your jurisdiction. So like that, you know, you can say whatever you want, but you don't have any real control. And so I think a lot of, you know, people on the inside had viewed it the same way. Um, and, and look, um, I think, in, in atmosphere wise, the players, I think probably enjoyed at least the ones I've talked to the experience and especially some visiting players enjoyed the experience of playing in that type of environment. But I can also tell you that there's a whole lot of other coyotes players that I talked to that said as, as nice as it is for what it is, it kind of feels like we're not even playing in the NHL and that part of it, I think, uh, left some Coyotes players wanting more. You're right, Frank. And I think one of the things when we talk about mullet, I think it's fine if you play there once a year. You're an e Eastern Conference guy. You're staying in Tempe. You're right by Old Town. Get to play really quick. It's fun. It's, and we're out. I, I think to play 41 home games in there year after year, uh, it's daunting. And you look at some of those players that are at the end of their career going, I don't know if I want to end my career at mullet. Now, having said that, I'm not sure how many of those players are super excited to be moving out of 85 degrees south um, south in, in Arizona to moving to Salt Lake City. It turns out it snows there. I hope they know that. Um, and I do think that that's serious. I, be careful what you wish for players and agents not playing in the mullet because you're not potentially playing in the mullet next year. And it doesn't mean it necessarily changes the scenario. Well, I think that's fair, by the way. And I think there's a ton of players that are really going to miss playing and living in Phoenix. Um, that said, I think there's going to be enough energy and excitement that exists around if this does indeed get across the finish line, because we're still dealing in a little bit of a hypothetical, that there's going to be players that are excited just as they were going to Seattle without any history, um, that they're in a spot where um, they might be excited for that. And to be fair, it's not perfect to start in Salt Lake City. This arena is not oriented for hockey. And they're going to have some hiccups and challenges along the way. But I think this idea of a rebrand, new logo, new team name, new market, um, that part also just kind of changes the idea and specter that has existed fairly or unfairly around this team for a while that, you know, I'm not breaking any news when I say this to you guys, that there's a bit of a, you know, toxic reputation of this team and franchise as it's been run for the better part of the last 10 plus years. One of the things we want to ask you about um, is the report that was in your report today about this idea that, you know, Alex Morello would sell the team for a sale price of 1.2 billion. Then that would include the $200 million relocation fee. But then this idea that then Alex Morello would get an expansion team back in a few years because Gary Bettman recently told the Hockey News, quote, whether it's $2 billion or $2.5 billion or $1.7 billion, I think that's the range I believe the owners would want to be in if we were going to consider expansion. So I'm just curious your thoughts on this idea that Morello sells the team but then gets an expansion team down the road when the expansion fee is looking like it's going up and up and up. I'd say that the answer there is wait and see. Um, 
I don't know what terms and conditions would be attached to that. I don't know what thresholds need to be met. I don't know if there's a purchase price or an expansion fee baked into an agreement like this. I don't know. There's a lot of details still to be sorted out um, on the expansion front. And more than anything, before you can even talk about any of that stuff, it's this is an expensive proposition, not just in terms of fees and ex- and money exchanging hands, but just in terms of developing that space, you know, privately, like you're talking significant outlay of funds that let's see if it all happens. And that's what the NHL is essentially saying. You make it happen and then we'll have a conversation. Okay. I want to ask you this with, with regard to the idea of the, t- the league coming back here in expansion, promising Alex Morello an expansion franchise or it being some part of this agreement. Yeah. I want to be clear, Craig, by the way, I don't know that there's an ironclad promise. I, I don't know that for sure. I think that's part of the discussion of, you know, you hit this, this, and this, and we will have that conversation. I don't, I need more details. I want your thoughts on this. Why would the NHL return to Arizona with, you, you mentioned the toxic reputation of this franchise. You, you wipe it out by leaving. Why would you come back with the possibility of a blank slate, a chance to wash away all of the past missteps and ugliness of this franchise and then choose an ownership group that has made so many mistakes along the way. We all remember the Katie Strang expose, the breakup with Glendale, the unpaid bills, moving to Mullet Arena, the failed Tempe vote, and assortment of other minor issues like its social media strategy. Why would the NHL come back with the opportunity to pursue any group and say, yeah, you're the guys? I think it's a really fair question and one that I'd like to ask given the opportunity. Um, I think there's been even more hiccups that have occurred behind the scenes that frankly have never made it to public light um, that would just further damage the reputation. But I think overall franchise wise, and that's why I'm also really curious to see whether or not the name and image of this team is going to be preserved too, that it's there. It's this extends beyond Alex Maruello to be fair. Um, This has this reputation has been building and growing for a while, but to say to to your point to ask that question of because of the missteps to this point, why would you then get back in bed with this group after it seems like you're so desperately trying to get out now? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I also think there's a healthy amount of go go prove it and then we can talk that it's not sort of baked in 100% guarantee you do this and you get a team it's you got to do a bunch of these things and then we can have the conversation and we're open to it so I'd be curious to see what those what that agreement looks like and this is more of a statement than a question but it's kind of falling on those same lines with with the possibility of expansion and we just saw it coming from and I know you didn't potentially see this today yet but the Arizona Coyotes themselves T- tweeted something about, oh, the Arizona Coyotes committed to staying in the desert. And, and I think what the implication was, at least what we're taking is, is that it's talking about the future, not now, not not 24, 25, but 27, 28, 28, 29, 29, 30, that we're still going to have this logo, we're still going to have this team. But I think what might get lost here is they're not going to have Cooley, they're not going to have Doan, they're not going to have Keller, they're not going to have Ingram, they're not going to have all of these draft picks that they've got slated over the next three years of drafts. They don't have all the prospects in the pipeline. That's all gone. You might have the same jersey and the same logo, but but an expansion team, buddy, you're starting over. Like, and, and I just, I, and I don't know if that's getting lost here right now that we can talk about expansion and oh, great, thanks, Morellos, for bringing us back a franchise. I, I don't know if the fan base is going to be lining up a, at that point. But but but, but again, that, that this thought of expansion, I'm not sure that that's going to be the carrot that that fools. The, the locals here that, oh, well, we'll get a team back eventually. I'm not sure that that's what's going to, oh, we'll be right there for you, Mr. Morello, when you're back in five to seven to 10 years. I'm not sure. I, I think that's a fair question or a fair statement to make. I would also say, like, I've watched this happen in other markets. I know you, know, you guys ended up being on the receiving end of Winnipeg, and we know how that played out, but they got the thrashers who were in such bad shape, who had never won a playoff game that needed rebuilding and got a new GM and a new head coach and all these things. No one really cared that it wasn't. And I know there's 
you know, more time that had passed, but no one cared that Keith Kachuk wasn't returning with the Jets for Jets 2.0. It's we just want hockey. And I appreciate and understand all the emotional connection that you're talking about. Um, but to me, even over the course of a five year period of time, players come, players go. It's about the identity, it's about the brand, it's about um, you know, the emotional root and connection that you have with your team that as I, you know, established off the top of our chat, like it's it is real and it does exist. Um, but not every team and with every player that comes through the door has that luxury that, Hey, you can put an ironclad stamp on it that Logan Cooley is still going to be a coyote in Arizona in 2029 anyway, even if they were to stay. One thing we want to ask, um, I'm not sure if you've done the the research on this because we haven't, but is Salt Lake city really a good market or is there a chance for a big payday with maybe some possible headaches waiting down the road? I'd say it's intrigued the NHL because it's one of the fastest growing markets in the U.S. It's affluent. There's a healthy injection of tech money uh, and people moving there. Um, it has a hockey history as a minor league hub, and there have been some really great players that have played there throughout the years, uh, particularly in the 80s. And I think there's also some curiosity like kind of the way i look at salt lake city right now is i know the nhl isn't first because the jazz are there but the same thing happened in nashville they had the titans in nashville and then the nhl came in second and it really took off and the city just exploded with population with growth and I think the NHL is kind of hitting that right in the middle now with Salt Lake City uh, if this does end up happening because that same sort of growth is just, you know, popping off right now in Salt Lake City. Frank, one last thing I want to get a sense of, and, and, and I realize this is very fluid right now, but do you have a sense of the timeline for what to expect over the next couple weeks or the next month or so? I, I think... A, like a lot of in terms of reporting the cat is is out of the bag the band-aid has more or less been ripped off uh be curious to see how specifically the nhl responds because if you look back to the reporting in 2011 it was the globe and mail that broke the story and the nhl refuted it then as speculation that the thrashers were moving to winnipeg and 11 days later, there was Gary Bettman at a podium in Winnipeg announcing it. And so uh, I don't know if they're going to take a different path. I think to this point, at least from what I've seen, and it's all kind of happened rapidly here in the last half hour, that they did say something publicly about not commenting. Um, obviously, a lot's been going back and forth. But in terms of timeline, if they are not as far down the track as I believe they are, based on my reporting, I wouldn't be shocked to see something um, as soon as the day after the Coyotes play their last home game regular season wise at Mullet Arena. And whether that happens or not, you know, I don't know. I can't put a guarantee on that. But what I can say is that unlike Atlanta to Winnipeg, between now and May 31st is a long time off. And so they've got some runway here to do what they need. Well, Frank, we can't thank you enough for taking some time um, to join us today and talking this through with us. And I'm sure we'll be in touch in the coming days and weeks as this story evolves. But thank you again for, for sharing your insight. Yeah, wish it was under different circumstances. Uh, wish you guys all the best. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm glad that we could talk this through. Frank, really appreciate yeah. the time. Appreciate it, Frank. Thanks.